Hello everyone, this video is going to be uh, a quick tip about topology in regards to sharpening um, extrusions. As you know, topology is a, a deep topic, so I'm just sharing what I have learned from, from tutorials. I will start by adding a plane, going into edit mode, right click, subdivide, do it three times, and then uh, I will select this set of faces here, then extrude up. And then uh, shade auto smooth and then add two levels of subdivisions. So the way you would go about uh, sharpening this usually is adding loop cuts. So if I add a loop cut here, another one here, I'll disable a uh, subdivision modifier just to see this better. And then you just keep adding loop cuts like this. Or maybe yeah, I forgot one here. To create a cube here, uh, as you can see, this is this is totally valid to sharpen um, the the extrusion. The problem here is that you can see that these edges are running along uh, the geometry. So if you have other detail here, it will be impacted by these edges. So what we want to do is try to constrain uh, this uh, these uh, supporting edge loops just to this area, because it's even worse if, let's say, all of this, instead of being, these two are flat, but if they are, for instance, if it's a curvature, if it's a circle, these um, edges here are going to ruin the curvature. So how do we go about this? I'll just move this, uh, yeah, up here, and then add another plane. Same thing, subdivide. Three times, select this, extrude up, hit auto smooth, add two levels of subdivision. And then here we will do the same thing, we will add putting loop cuts like this. But here, uh, instead of leaving it like this, we will select these uh, edges here and then Control X to resolve them. And then we will bring up the knife tool with K and then cut here. You can press spacebar to commit the cut. Same here, K. And then we will also run an edge here at the center. After that we can just dissolve these. Control X. And now you can see we replaced our uh, uh, edge loops here by these ones running up and then we're using the same uh, edge loops to sharpen our uh, corner. Now same as before we will add some supported loop cuts. Then we get something like this. If I switch on a wireframe, you can see the difference between the two topologies. The flow uh, in, in this one seems a lot more natural. Of course, you can always uh, sharpen the corners a lot more if you want by sliding the edges with double G. Forgot, you can also slide these edges to keep the size of your quads consistent. Roughly something like this. Before we go, I will quickly mention this handy and free add-on called RePrimitive. I will put the link in the description so you can download it. What it does is that, uh, you know how when you add a primitive in Blender, then let's say you move it a bit. Yeah, before, uh, so let's see, when you add it, you get this little menu here that allows you to uh, tweak the parameters of the cylinder or the primitive in general, but once you move it, you can't get this menu back. Even by pressing F9, uh, once it's out of its original position, you can no longer change it. What this add-on does is uh, just that. So here, by selecting the object and then pressing Pre primitive, you get the menu back. So now you can change the parameters of the primitive again. The second feature is fixed rotation. Um, you can see that here I still have uh, my local uh, axes because I haven't touched the rotation. But uh, in, in a normal Blender, the way you uh, reset the rotation is by pressing Alt-R. Now you clear the rotation. You, they call that clear rotation. But uh, let's say if you apply the rotation, you lose uh, those local rotations. So Alt-R doesn't work anymore. Uh, now what this add-on does is 
fix in that rotation. So you go into edit mode, you select the face you want to be facing uh, up, so do, uh, towards the Z direction. Then you go to object mode and click fix rotation. That's it for me. I hope you learned something. Have a great day.